Diego, I want to welcome you. You are from the UN. You are working with uh, GeoData, and uh, you have a great interest in OpenStreetMap. So I'm very excited about your talk. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lara, Christine, Walter. Okay. Thank you, thank you everyone, and um, special thanks also to to Sarah for making it possible to all the um, the OSM Foundation, to the organizers, and um, and especially thank you for the opportunity to uh, to be able to speak here. So yes, my name is uh, Diego González, and I am the chief of the Solutions and Support Unit, um, which means nothing, and I am also the coordinator of the UN, UN Maps um, initiative or program. And I work at the United Nations Global Service Center, um, which is an, an office um, that is both in Spain and Italy. And basically what we do is to provide um, services um, to all the different uh, peacekeeping missions, political missions in the field, and even beyond no, to the, the different um, UN entities at large. And specifically, what we do within our team is to provide innovative geospatial solutions. Um, this could be um, web applications or mobile applications, everything with the idea to support the peace, peace in the world. So let me give you a little bit of a background where everything, everything started. Back, um, actually, let me even go um, um, earlier on. I, I worked here in, um, in Nairobi for uh, about four years. Uh, but that was uh, back in 2013 to 2016, 17. Um, the way we were operating, working with data specifically and with the creation of the maps was um, we would give a map package to um, a consultant with a medium resolution satellite imagery and with um, the software, um, the data sets, and they would have to digitize everything. So do the feature, the feature extraction, basically the, the mapping. Following like a very tedious <clears throat> and lengthy process um, with the MGCP, which is um, another military standard for the, the production of topographic maps, the 50K, one is to 50,000 topographic maps. Uh, this worked well. We were um, <clears throat> providing maps to different uh, field missions. The problem is that once we did all the cartographic production of those maps, they were produced once for one specific product the 50K topographic map. And do you know what, what else, apart from that, we did with the data? Nothing. It would stay there in a drawer, and it would never be touched again. And that was really, really unfortunate. Um, it was basically a waste of time and, and resources. The maps were good, but I think, or we were thinking that we could do better. So the reason, <clears throat> why we used OSM is because we thought that with OSM we could do better. The idea was to use USM, OSM as a, the repository of, um, of the data and do all the mapping on OSM so that we could take a daily differential of the database within our data center and we would be able to create not just one product, but a wide range of products that I will, I will explain um, later on. So everything was perfect. Everything combined perfectly. And also, we thought that um, the goals, the objectives, the vision of OSM aligned very well with our own vision at the UN. Uh, we had, from a technical perspective, um, a very flexible uh, data model that we, uh, could be used uh, <clears throat> to produce many different outputs, 
but also we wanted to integrate with the community <clears throat> to have um, a better understanding of, uh, of the field and to be able to renew that data and update that, that data constantly. But <clears throat> we couldn't stay there. Unfortunately, we cannot use OSM just like that in our products. Um, it would be fantastic, but there are certain data within OSM that we cannot use because of the, because of the UN. Um, I'm talking specifically about the in administrative and international boundaries and the authoritative data related to the spelling of uh, country names or uh, towns, uh, country capitals, etc. So we said OSM is perfect, but let's combine that with our own UN repositories uh, to create a better, better output. We had many, many different challenges. Um, apart from the international boundaries, we said, okay, there could be the possibility also to, um, to use other um, commercial providers, other uh, mapping providers. But obviously, they didn't give us that information that we wanted with regards to the official, official data from the UN. And forget about trying to get um, accurate data of um, remote areas in, for example, Central African Republic or in Somalia. This is a real example of a rural area in, in Somalia. That's why, basically, we cannot use commercial providers, obviously, because we cannot work with them um, to have a better, better information. So for all those reasons, we wanted to collaborate and to work uh, with OSM and to leverage the potential of OSM. And the last challenge that we had is, apart from the topographic data, is also the operational data. Unfortunately, that's a data that we need to keep within our um, UN databases because that's the core of the daily operations. <clears throat> so that we need to maintain that data and merge it and combine it with, uh, with the rest of the information that we get. So thinking all about that in 2019, officially, we launched what we call UN Maps, which basically <clears throat> is the best way to support the mandates and the operations of the United Nations from the geospatial, the geospatial perspective. And what do we have under UN Maps? We have different features or, or services. <clears throat> we have uh, base maps with what we call the street map, uh, taking information, as I said, from uh, OSM and the UN databases, and combining that with our um, design, design rules. We have an image map with the uh, high resolution um, satellite and drone imagery that we constantly acquire and purchase and we include it there. We also have the terrain map showing all the uh, earth surface features, all the physical features um, with the contour lines, etc. And we have what we call the globe, which is the 3D representation uh, to unearth all those insights and trends and patterns that otherwise wouldn't be visible in a 2D environment. And believe me, for all these products, we are using OSM. And that's why we are extremely grateful for all the community here. The other one that is more on our side on the UN is the operational map. Um, in this case, we have a wide range of uh, layers of information related to the daily operational activities of the UN. So where are blue helmets are um, the, the troops of the, the peacekeepers, for example, or um, where the logistics information is, can be found, where is a remote UN camp located. So we, we need to keep that information also within the UN databases. We also have Another product is the search, and this is the best combination for us from OSM information, <clears throat> uh, points of interest and place names, 
combining with uh, the UN, UN information. So if we want to find the exact location of a given UN camp, then people will, will go to UN maps um, within the UN. And the last one is the direction. Um, in this case, again, we are getting the road network from OSM and we are <clears throat> merging that information with uh, our supply routes, patrol routes, and our security information uh, on the ground to give that added value. But apart from those uh, services, we also have applications that we have developed on top of OSM data. One of them is the Maps on Demand application. Uh, in this way, it's a, it's a web um, application. We are um, empowering non-geospatial specialists to create their own maps, uh, the curated um, maps with the pre-configured uh, map templates and the latest data from OSM and from other repositories of uh, different areas, different areas of, and of interest. Uh, we create now with this application, uh, within a few minutes, uh, topographic maps or urban maps with a, a great detail and very professional um, look and feel. The other one is that we have developed and is available in the official app stores is the UN Maps mobile application in which we are also doing a offline routing, which is um, with the direction that is especially important for our colleagues in the field missions. We are also creating uh, digital twins. In this case, we've been collaborating with the entire community. This is an example of uh, Tripoli, uh, collecting information on the building footprints and um, also even developing um, a version, another version of the street complete with the building complete about the heights, the um, volumes of those buildings, the roof, the roof type, um, etc. So that we can create um, a realistic um, <clears throat> mirror or twin of uh, a specific areas of interest. So where is in general UN maps used is both actually in the field, our colleagues in the field in the UN are constantly using it, and also in the office, and it's used for many different purposes. And uh, thanks to you, thanks to your work, um, we can perform a better, better work to support peace. Uh, we do reporting, we do patrolling, we do um, water um, extraction and exp exploration, we do humanitarian relief, and. Um, and other development, and that's thanks thanks to uh, the entire community. So, how how is a UN maps? How does it work? We have four main pillars. Um, on one side, on the people, the community, we have um, a range of uh, GIS professionals, geospatial professionals, that are working working with us. Some of them are mapping, some others are validating data, some others are uh, working with the, with the community, doing outreach, others are working on the databases, the applications, etc. But at the same time, and this is extremely important, and this is also why we are here, we established the UN Mappers community that I'm sure that you have heard of. Um, with us is uh, actually Severan, one of the, um, the coordinators of the UN Mappers community. And, um, and what we want to do is to approach the entire community to work together. Um, and this is the essence, obviously, of OpenStreetMap. Um, and thanks to all of you guys, uh, we have a better data over the areas of interest where our colleagues are operating in uh, remote locations in Africa and the Middle East and Asia and um, Latin America, etc. So thanks, thanks to UN mappers and thanks to en the entire OSM community, we are able to support peace. And then on the other side, <clears throat> we have uh, two things. We have uh, the state-of-the-art um, infrastructure that is based at the UNGSC, the Global Service Center in Brindisi and Valencia. With the, that data center, we have all the different databases. We are purely agnostic with uh, when it comes to the technology. 
Sometimes we use um, a proprietary software, some other times we use open source. Uh, we take the best of both worlds. And at the same time, we are combining, as I said, the databases. We are taking data from the UN, authoritative information, operational data, and also OSM and other repositories. So we are really making the best of the, these two uh, possible worlds to provide better services. And this is how, how we operate. We work internally with um, the UN personnel, both the uniformed personnel and civilians, working, working together with the entire community through the UN mappers. We are using in UN mappers the, the hot tasking manager also to coordinate activities. Um, internally, we are doing the a professional uh, mapping and validation of the data. Um, and then we co um, combine all that data within our databases and we produce um, all those services that I explained earlier. And I want to say a few words about UN Mappers because um, it's not about, uh, about data, it's about the community. It's really about um, having that sense of, uh, of trust that we should have to, um, to have a, a better, better output for everyone. We are, and um, Severan and, and Mikael will explain this afternoon um, during the session that we have, um, we are doing um, capacity building, um, uh, mapathons, different events. We are bringing on board um, interns um, to do capacity building and engagement with them. Um, we do activations, obviously, in case there is a, a, a pressing, pressing issue. Um, and we communicate through uh, social media and, uh, and our website, themaps.un.org. Uh, and one of those important things that within UN Mappers we are doing is the UN Maps Learning Hub. And this is extremely crucial because is the only one, I would say, that has courses, online courses, that are available to everyone in more than six, seven languages, all the six official uh, UN lang uh, languages and some others like uh, Italian and Portuguese. So what we want really is to um, engage with um, as many people as possible and to make things much, much easier to them. Um, Severan will, will be able to give you all the details, definitely. We have different courses there um, for capacity building. We have quizzes. Um, we try to do it in, um, in engaging mode um, to have a, a better output for everyone. And I, I have explained what we are taking or why we are taking a, a OSM data. But I want to say also in return is our contribution, the contribution from UN Maps and from UN Mappers. And this is an example of uh, Kidal in, uh, in Mali. And um, look at the difference, how Google Maps in that case was um, given information. And then we come in as UN Maps and we bring, we bring those maps to life. We add all the um, road network, the uh, hydrography, all the land use, the, the land cover, uh, points of interest, um, all the infrastructure in general, and we make a big change for those people working in the, in the field. Another example is in a Central African Re uh, Republic, um, in another environment. In this case, is the before and after. Once we come in, <clears throat> we add all the information that is relevant for our colleagues plus the operational data that is extremely important for us. And this is again our contribution. There we go. Those are the different funding missions. That's why uh, where we are getting the money, the money from. But look at that. We have um, populated data over more than uh, 600 uh, map sheets in all those different countries. And we are adding data related to the, to the operations. And we continue growing and growing um, along with the community. And not only those tangible uh, benefits, but also the more intangible. 
the, the sense of community, the capacity building, working even with member states so to promote OSM uh, for the better um, humanitarian relief and the urban, urban and regional planning and the development. Um, so all that capacity building, all those bringing together, that's what is um, making um, the difference for us. And look at the impressive numbers. <clears throat> Over the years, we've had thousands of volunteers from uh, UN mappers, uh, hundreds of, uh, of mapping events and mapathons. Uh, we have collected data um, for topographic uh, maps, uh, for land use, land cover, hydrography, um, uh, roads, etc. And this is what is important. And thanks to you, we are making that impact, impact for, for peace and development. Uh, we are working with the field missions to have a better understanding of, uh, of the ground in the operations and the decision making. <clears throat> or we are working with uh, special political missions to reduce tensions between the different parties or working in Colombia um, to assess um, the human rights uh, abuses or uh, working in Somalia or in um, South Sudan um, to provide community wells to, uh, to the local population or um, activation of uh, mapping after um, earthquakes, earthquakes or, or flooding or working with UNESCO and the national government in, in Madagascar um, creating the road network uh, over that, that country so that there is a better planning for schools and for those children that are in need. So that's, that's really the, the difference that we are all, all providing here as a community. And this is thanks to you. And um, I make an appeal, um, come to us, um, join us, so that we can continue making the difference. And as we say in UN maps, mapping the world supporting peace and serving humanity. So thank you very much. Uh, before you go, we, we got some questions uh, on vanillas, which I also forgot to share about, <laughs> that I'll share after, after this. Yes. Um, so first question with the most up votes is, do you and mappers know that they can edit and be part of OpenStreetMap uh, without the UN projects? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so the the idea is with UN mappers is to create um, data, so to work obviously with OSM data uh, in projects that are related to the UN operations. But we are actually going beyond there. Um, uh, just to give you a couple of examples, um, we've been working with the community also in, um, in Mogadishu in Somalia. <clears throat> we've been working um, in an other areas in, um, in Sri Lanka or also in the Jammu and Kashmir area between Pakistan and India. So um, UN mappers is a way to coordinate <clears throat> uh, all the mapping activities, but it really goes beyond um, what we are doing specifically for the UN operations is really for the greater good of the entire community. So <clears throat> I think the, if, if I want a message to come across here is that there is a, an, a, a fantastic synergy between the UN and OSM and that it goes in both directions. Um, we leverage OSM data and at the same time we contribute to the entire community um, to make something a bigger together. That's the idea. All right. Um, I'll ask one more, and then maybe the rest can be answered online. Um, so you shared some exciting uh, map services that you've created from your projects and data. So people are wondering if that's only for internal UN use or they're publicly available. Thank you, Laura. That's a fantastic uh, um, a question. Um, <clears throat> Some of those services are um, already available to the, to the public, um, especially uh, operational data um, that is related to the peace and security pillar within the UN um, to promote and, and really work on the, the sustainable development goal, goals. There is other information, um, especially the base maps, that at the moment are only available to all the UN, UN staff. Um, we are working 
very hard to make it available to everyone, to the entire um, community, to all the public. The reason why we haven't been able to do this yet is because we are working with our legal, legal office. As you know, the UN is a very conservative um, organization. They take really good care of the, of the data, uh, making sure that there is no uh, political or diplomatic implications between the different staff members. So there is some data that is used for us within the UN for operational reasons that some, somehow cannot be exposed um, outside. So we are trying to disaggregate that and to make sure that there is uh, proper disclaimers so that we can make all these data and services available to everyone. Stay tuned because hopefully in 2025, um, we, will, we will make it available. Um, okay, uh, that was it for the questions. The rest will be answered online. They're also pretty interesting ones. So uh, a round of applause for Diego. Thank you. Thank you.